Today we're taking you on a journey to the heart of Texas, Dallas. Dallas is a city renowned for its rich history, diverse culture, and of course, delicious barbecue that keeps locals and tourists alike coming back for more. That's what I'm talking about. Look at this. Look at that rib. That's incredible. <laughs> During our time in Dallas, we explore the city's history at Sixth Floor Museum, one of the most significant events in America, and a visit to Pioneer Plaza, a true testament to the city's pioneering spirit. So join us for this whirlwind tour of Dallas, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more amazing travel experiences. Let's jump into it. Starting our full day in Dallas at the Bishop's Art District, we're gonna get donuts, and then we're gonna go explore. You guys know that when we visit a new place, we love to seek out a good donut shop. This is actually the new location for a donut shop that we visited in Miami, but we liked it so much we figured we had to go to it again in Dallas. You can even watch the donuts being made there, which is an added bonus. The Salty loves y'all. Pops is ready, he's got his cowboy hat. So it's about 8.30 on a Friday and nothing's really happening or open down here yet, but good coffee, good donuts, and this is just a cool place to explore with the murals. Come back if you like to do some shopping later in the day. All right, now we're heading on to something that's truly Texas, waiting in line for barbecue. While it was still early in the day, we heard that this barbecue spot was popular, so we wanted to get there about 30 minutes before they opened. This is how you know you're getting close to a barbecue spot when you see a massive cow on the side of the building. Made it at 9.30, Pops is the first in line. There's already about 15 people behind him and it opens at 10.30. I do have to say that this is one of my dad's favorite things. He loves sitting in line and talking to people, so I think he's gonna have fun with all the barbecue waiting we're gonna do. Cadillac Barbecue is ranked number six on Texas Monthly's top barbecue places in the state of Texas. This is the reason that us and other people were waiting in line for it to open. If you happen to wanna come here, we're here on a Friday and most people started showing up at about 9.45. After the introduction to the meats available that day, my dad was first in line and was ushered in to make his order. That's what I'm talking about. Look at this. Look at that rib. That's incredible. <laughs> Since this was our first major barbecue in Texas, we ordered a little bit of everything to try. This is our pastrami beef rib. They say everything's bigger in Texas. Look at this rib. This is over at a pound and a half of meat right there. Pastrami beef rib. And if so you put excited. barbecue sauce on it, they said they will kick you out, Throw so. Out. Oh my god, so tender. It's all in your mouth. Wow. <laughs> Pretty amazing. This was an incredible place to eat. They had great barbecue and great sides. Do note though, this is the only time we ordered a beef rib on our entire Texas trip as they're very expensive. I didn't know that before I ordered and I think this one cost me around $55. This is vegetables, broccoli and apples. You're so healthy. We had to throw in the towel so uh, <laughs> Pops isn't letting it go to waste though, it was too good. All right. When we left, there's about 45 people in line so if you want to eat here quickly, I recommend getting here about 30 minutes before they open. We made it to downtown Dallas. First stop is the Sixth Floor Museum. The Sixth Floor Museum looks at the life, death, and legacy of President John F. Kennedy. It's a popular spot, so buy your tickets in advance. That X right there marks the spot where approximately John F. Kennedy was shot, and then the window right here is where he was shot from. As you walk around the outside area, you can explore the grassy knoll where many of the conspiracy theories come from and learn more about John F. Kennedy. They only allow photography in the museum, so I can't show it to you, but I can say it's well worth visiting. In the same way as today, when people will say they know where they were when the Twin Towers came down, back in 1963, I was a second grader, and I can remember all of us were taken out of class, lined up in the cafeteria, and all sent home, and we didn't understand what was going on. But then that week at home, I remember my parents saying, you have to watch all this on television. So we were nonstop in front of the black and white TV, watching all the things that developed, the time when Lee Harvey Oswald got shot, and um, all the things around that, and plus the, the huge funeral parade and everything. It was just at a critical time in American history, and even as a small child, six, seven-year-old, I could remember it. If you have a memory of John F. Kennedy's assassination yourself, leave that in the comments. After leaving the Sixth Floor Museum, take the five-minute walk over to the JFK Memorial. It's meant to be an open tomb 
signifying the freedom of President Kenny's spirit. It's definitely not what I was expecting to see, but it's still a beautiful memorial. We left the car in the parking area and decided to set off to explore Dallas on foot. The walk that we're doing down here is about two and a half miles through downtown Dallas, which is the perfect way to burn off all that barbecue that we ate for lunch. Next stop, we're heading up to the top of Union Tower, right there. But you have to place your bets on whether you think Pops is going to go up there or not. <laughs> From the sixth floor museum is about a 10 minute walk to Reunion Tower. After paying your fee, you have to wait in line to get the next available elevator to take you all the way to the top. I made it up to the top and as you can see, Pops is not here with me. Really cool views though. The tower sits 561 feet above downtown Dallas and it was built in 1978. You can walk all around the outside and the inside of the large ball and it gives you a 360 degree view of the Dallas area. That was a long wait because one of the elevators was broken, but the views up there are pretty incredible. We're on our way over to Pioneer Plaza and we have found the mythical Pegasus. There he is and he's moving <laughs> as we speak. This Pegasus is actually like the mascot for Dallas as it sat atop the largest skyscraper in the city that was built in 1934. This is the original sign sitting here outside of the Omni Hotel. We made it to Pioneer Park which is famous for the cattle drive sculpture you see behind me. Pops probably terrified some young children with that running. <laughs> Pioneer Plaza features a famous cattle drive sculpture that was completed in 1994. The sculpture consists of 49 bronze steers and three riders. I think it's especially cool the way they have them going through the water. Supposedly it's one of the largest bronze sculptures in the world and it's definitely something you want to see on your visit to Dallas. Be sure to walk all the way to the top to see the rider at the top of the hill and go down and see the waterfall. There's also a Pioneer Cemetery with some of these dates going back to the early 1800s right next to the sculptures. This has been a lot of fun. Downtown Dallas is very walkable and we're seeing a lot of cool sights along the way. Next up we headed to the AT&T Discovery District where their headquarters are and which feels kind of like a mini Times Square. Cowboy Pops in the mirror room. Very cool. You could start your Instagram with this photo right here. This is pretty cool. There's restaurants, art, and interactive tech experiences you can have here. So this is just a place you walk around and experience. It's kind of cool. Pops, I challenge you to connect four. Do you accept that challenge? I accept and I would bet money on this challenge. <laughs> One dollar. Done. Bob's didn't even realize he had won. He was getting more pieces he didn't even know. This qualifies the win if you didn't realize that you won. No more or One of the most impressive things is the massive TV screen on the side of the building. Plus they have the Globe art installation that lights up at nighttime. Right across the street they have the Flying Horse Cafe and we stopped in for some coffee and a pastry before we continued on. That was a great stop for coffee, now we got a couple more places we're going to explore. Next up we headed to one of the things I was most excited to see in Dallas, the Giant Eyeball. This is the giant eyeball, but this is as close as you can get to it as it's on private property. I think it's massive though. There's Pops right here, and you can see how big that eyeball is. Originally designed for an art project in Chicago, the eye sat there for a few years before it was moved here in 2013. It's official, the giant eyeball is my favorite thing I've seen in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Pops? It's pretty amazing, pretty unusual. <laughs> Not your favorite thing though? Not my favorite thing. Our next stop was the art museum, but on our way we saw something called Thanksgiving Square and we decided to investigate. It's pretty fascinating that as we're walking around we're just finding new spots like every block. I have no idea 
what this is, but we're gonna go see. Thanksgiving Square was built here in 1976 and was designed to create a place in downtown Dallas to give gratitude to God. They encourage visitors to lay on the ground, so Pops is lying on the ground to look up. The spiral chapel rises 90 feet and has 73 different pieces of stained glass. It's beautiful to see and it's a non-denominational chapel that welcomes people from all cultures and religions. We're on our way to a park where we decided to go to the Museum of Art because it's free. The Dallas Art Museum is probably one of the best art museums I've ever been in. Supposedly they have over 25,000 pieces of art here and the building is massive. This is the smartest thing I've ever seen at an art museum. Please touch this piece, which looks like that one. <laughs> so people do not touch that one. This one looks so much like Josh and I, I couldn't resist standing in front of it. One of the most important pieces to see while you're here is the Icebergs by Frederick Edwin Church. This is an awesome piece. Look at this big guy. And he is looking down at that little guy. <laughs> My dad and I spent over an hour here and it's impressive that this museum is free. If you want to go deeper, there are some rotating exhibits that you can pay for, but we didn't even do those and we still had a great time. And this is the Clyde Warren Park, which actually goes over the highway. Pretty cool open space if you want to explore. We're just walking to the end and then we're going to go back to where we parked our car. The Clyde Warren Park is five acres in downtown Dallas and it's a meeting place for people all over the city to come and hang out. They often have food trucks and events on the weekends, and if it's a nice day, you should definitely come see it. In case you didn't go to the donut shop that we went to earlier, it's also right here, which is pretty awesome. So we walked about two and a half miles through Dallas, got all the way to the end of the park, took an Uber back to the sixth floor museum, and now it's been about eight hours since we had barbecue, so I think we can have a little bit to eat before ending this video. <laughs> For our dinner spot, we are a little bit outside of downtown Dallas at the Dallas Farmer's Market. The Dallas Farmer's Market is a great place to get a meal. They have a large 26,000 square foot food hall with lots of different restaurants and shops. Plus, they also have a farmer's market where you can get lots of fresh produce that's outside of the food hall. I almost got the breakfast tacos in the back, but I decided to go as healthy as I possibly could after all that barbecue. Pickled vegetables, chicken, rice. How do you beat that? And you viewers know that he's not fooling anybody with that. Pops isn't eating anything, so this is healthier <laughs> than eating nothing. <laughs> that was a fun, trendy spot in Dallas. We have one more stop before we end this video. This is the last stop of the trip, the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge, and this is the overlook with a great view of the bridge and downtown Dallas. Finished in 2012, this bridge is 400 feet tall and 1,200 feet long. I'm a huge fan of bridges, so you know I love spots like this, but I mean, look at how cool that view is. And they got this pedestrian walkway so you can get lots of views of the bridge. In case you want a cool spot to relax and watch the sunset, you can take these chairs with this view. And just like that, our 24 hours in Dallas is done. You can see all of our Texas content in the description. Let us know if we left something off that you love, and we will see you on the next video.